I'm gonna play Jinx for 10 hours because I suck at AD carry. So what better way to improve at AD carry than play Jinx? A hyper carry who has no mobility, so I have to focus on perfect positioning while also trying to do tons of damage. But before I start feeding my ass off, I should probably look up some runes and build options for Jinx. My runes were Lethal Tempo with Sorcery as my secondary, basically very greedy runes that focus on scaling and popping off in teamfights. My build usually went Boots, Kraken Slayer, Infinity Edge as my first three items. My last three items were either Runon's Hurricane against a lot of melee champions for extra splash damage, Rapid Fire Cannon against Engage so I can stay back, Lord Dominix against Tanks, Bloodthirster into Squishy Teams, and GA against Assassins. Well, let's jump into some normal games. Right away in my first game, you can tell that I don't usually play AD carry. Even though I got two kills here, I started way too far back, got hit by every skill shot, and ended up dying in the end. There were other fights when I would just walk into melee range instead of kiting away from my enemies. I am way more used to playing tanks, so playing around my range is something that I'm definitely gonna need to work on. Yeah, let's just say this first game was rough. Wah, wah. There were so many little things I was doing wrong, from CSing, to positioning, to switching my Q forms correctly. But later on, things really started to click for me and I popped off. I positioned back, got good resets with my passive, and did tons of damage. Even though AD carry can feel useless sometimes, it's moments like these that make me really excited to learn the role. Ooh, huge. Dude, uh, all you need to do is go off in one fight, it's crazy. And then it all came down to the final fight. My team was low, so they had the back, but Riven and I decided to try in 2v3. Basically, I just thought, how would I normally play this fight? And then I just did the opposite. And it led to one of the most exciting plays of the entire challenge. Triple kill! My next game did not start off great. In my defense, I really didn't think Scion's Q would go that far. But once again, after laning phase, I was actually able to play the game. Having my boys with me kept me safe, and I was actually allowed to do damage. Seriously, if I could just get better at the laning phase and just stop getting hit by every single skill shot, I think I could be a pretty good AD carry. But I definitely have a long way to go before that'll happen. Luckily for my next game, I was against a Blitzcrank, and although I usually hate playing against him, this game actually helped me. Let me explain. Because one Blitzcrank hook can be so punishing, I forced myself to play extra safe and farm until the enemy made a mistake, which they eventually did. This different playstyle helped me focus on CSing and winning small trades that eventually led to even more kills later. But despite having a really good game myself, there was a problem. This is so stupid! What is this, man? Seriously, this motherfucker didn't care about anything other than running it down and killing our base. I probably should have built Lord Dominic second, but because Scion didn't have armor, I really just thought Infinity Edge would do more damage. Dude, what the absolute hell was that? And my final normal game was my best game yet. It all started with a messy but effective 2v2 in the bot lane with my support Kiana. Don't ask. Then, disaster struck. Anyway, fast forward about 10 minutes and I had quite possibly my greatest team fight of the whole challenge. Thank you. This is unofficial qu- This is an unofficial penta! But in the end, the enemy team was just too strong, and even though I was pretty fed, I wasn't good enough to carry my team. So at about the two hour mark, I realized I still suck at AD carry. So I took to YouTube in order to learn more about Jinx, and these are the tips that I found. One, you can use your Q to push out the lane and hit level two first. Doing this helps your weak early game by giving you extra tempo and an early level advantage. Two, a lot of other AD carries hit their power spikes at one or two items, but Jinx needs two or three to start doing big damage. This means you should probably play safe and farm early. Three, this doesn't mean to play super safe though. Your passive in fights can make up for your lack of items, so fighting with your team is very important. Just don't force bad fights. And for the bonus tip, you can actually kill a tower to activate your passive and catch the enemy off guard. This can lead to free kills or help you do damage in a big team fight. 
For my first game, I had a support Teemo, and I was pretty pessimistic after he died early. But then Pantheon came down from the heavens and turned this bad fight into a double kill. Just for Orn to immediately TP behind me and kill me. Then I got a free kill using the tower to activate my passive and chase down the enemy Ash. That's something that I learned you can do from a video. And even though I wasn't getting a ton of kills this game, I was still making some sick plays. Oh, 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 holy shit! <laughs> oh yeah, remember when Orn TP bot to kill me? Well, him leaving Alawi alone in lane turned her into an absolute monster. Basically, the enemy team could never fight us 5v5 because three of them had to stop Alawi's split push at any given time. Unfortunately, my luck would come to an end because my next game was bad. And to make matters worse, I did not respect Lucian's early damage at all. And for the cherry on top, my bard spent most of the game roaming and just left me to die under tower multiple times. And after all that, Bard still had more deaths than me. Yeah, this game was super tilting. I'm just gonna move on to my next game if you don't mind. And the start of my next game was a complete disaster. No way. No way I got hit by that Q. There's no way. I don't know why, but every time my passive goes off, I lose my mind and all I can see is more kills. It's honestly a very fitting character design for Jinx as a champion though. Anyway, this game was super difficult for me to play when the enemy master Yi was able to just do this to my team. And even though we were behind the entire game, in the final fight my Zerath went crazy. He killed Jin and Irelia with his ult and managed to get a triple kill on Shaco right after. I also managed to get a revenge kill on Master Yi which was pretty nice but was also way too close. Holy shit. Seriously, if you asked me how we won this game, I honestly have no idea. I feel like we should have lost this game like 20 minutes ago. So after a pretty lucky win, it only makes sense that my next game would be super frustrating. But it didn't start that way after getting a pretty worth first blood at the start of the game. And things only got better from there. But you see, the problem with most Blitzcrank players is they think any hook is a good hook. That is definitely not the case when Blitzcrank has half HP and you hook the Leona instead of the Nyla. The game went even more sideways when my Yasuo decided to basically just quit the game. Guess he got tired of waiting for his 310 power spike or whatever. Even though the Yasuo was trolling, I still tried my hardest and even pulled off a 1v5 play that saved our base. Then it all came down to the big final fight. We somehow convinced Yasuo to group up one time and well, uh, we lost? Yeah, even with the perfect fight, we were just too far behind. I was carried pretty hard in my next game, but here's a little montage of my highlights, I guess. Yes, let's go. Anyway, my next game started off pretty rough after a really bad early team fight. I don't even know really why this fight happened in the first place, but it was a terrible idea. And even though things weren't looking great this game, I still found ways to have a little bit of fun. Oh, ho, ho, holy shit, I'm so good! Yeah, nothing really that interesting happened this game, to be honest. It was just one of those games where every lane lost, and even though we had a few good fights here and there, the enemy team was just too far ahead. So after about six and a half hours, I had changed my mindset and I was ready to start playing better. Yeah, I died immediately. But playing safer and waiting for the enemy to make random mistakes definitely turned out to be a pretty effective strategy. I also did my best to CS better by taking more waves and jungle camps. Basically, if I saw nothing going on, I was farming, which led to me having almost 9 CS per minute. And because I had so much gold from minions, I was able to do way more damage in fights, even though I didn't have a lot of kills at this point. This was the first game where I actually thought I played well from top to bottom. Sure, I probably could have grouped a little more, but I had the least deaths and the best CS of any of the games this challenge. And my games only got better from there. It started with a super messy fight in the bot lane, but after a great hook by Pike, we turned it into a triple kill somehow. Dead? You're gonna die too though? Cool, huge, I missed the cannon. And I followed that up with a flawless double kill in the bot lane. 
Huge. Almost. No! No! And at this point, I knew this was my game to carry. All my research and all my training was leading to this mo- Fuck. No, but in all seriousness, this was my game to lose. Our team was down, but not out. All we needed was one amazing team fight and we could get Baron or maybe even just win the game. And with a little help from Ivern's shields, I did damage out the ass this game and had my first game where I really felt like I carried. Like I asked him to. Holy shit, do we win? And all that just for me to die to tower because my red buff hit Thresh. Still an awesome game though. And just like the game before, I got off to an amazing early lead in the bot lane. It wasn't a triple kill this time, but two assists and some extra farm isn't too shabby either. Okay, we got a kill. We'll pop the potion. And after a big fight in the mid lane, I was once again in the perfect position to carry this game. I definitely wasn't playing as well as last game, but I knew I could carry this game too. And just like fate, I managed to get even more kills and assists in the next fight after barely surviving the initial engage. Just to die right after to Akali. And just like that, my moment had arrived. Lilia and I were cut off from the rest of the team, but I knew we could clean up this fight if needed. And as soon as Rakan died and I got my passive, I knew it was over. But in my excitement, I forgot to ward the bush, got stunned by TF, and even though we traded one for one, I knew I had just thrown the game. This was the first game where I was legitimately mad at myself because if I had just warded that stupid bush and killed TF, I know I could have won that whole fight. My next game got off to a pretty bad start when I misplayed our first fight. I know there are a lot of things I could have done differently, but you can probably tell from my voice I was still just tilted from last game. I didn't realize I was in her ult that time, but whatever, man. But after a great gank from Hecarim and some juicy shutdown gold, my confidence was restored and I knew I could redeem myself this game. That's huge. Oh, this is huge. Okay. Then I got a pretty nice shutdown on the enemy Alawi right after, even though Brand ended up dying to her. And just like the enemy team wanted to lose, Warwick tried to dive me and gave me another huge shutdown. Unfortunately, I went top to defend the tower and was quickly reminded that I am just an ADC. Typical ADC experience, I guess. Yeah, in the end, there really wasn't much I could do this game. Despite the losses, I was actually super happy with my performance over the last few games. I mean, in pretty much every game, I was the best player on my team, and I really felt like I was playing well, even if I lost the game deciding fight during one of those games. Oh yeah, the game at the bottom I forgot to record, so I played an extra game so you could get the whole 10 hours of content. And I kept playing well in my next game too. I managed to get a double kill because I hit level six before the enemy bot lane and I just knew I could kill them if I went all in here. And things got even better when Misfortune stayed in lane after thinking we recalled. Unfortunately, I ended up dying a few minutes later trying to save my Janna, who did survive the fight at least. In the next fight, I fell back into my old habits a little bit. After getting a kill on Zillion, all I wanted to do was get more kills. Am I trolling? I'm trolling! Oh my gosh, I thought I could just kill her. But I bounced back a little later getting a double kill in mid, and watched as Mordekaiser sent that poor Zillion to the Shadow Realm. Anyway, this fight led to us getting Baron right after. And even though I was kinda popping off this game, there was sadly no way I was going to survive the Malphite and Zillion Bomb delivery service. Yeah, we managed to win this game pretty handily after one more fight. And with the clock winding down, it was time for the final game of the challenge, and let me tell you, it was amazing. It all started with my Leona going in as soon as Soraka stepped up too far. Uh, she's dead, right? But as you all know from my Leona video, the only thing Leonas can do is go in, even if it's a terrible idea. But hey, when it works, it's absolutely amazing. And honestly, as long as I'm not the one dying, I really don't mind if Leona goes all in all the time. I'll be honest. When I saw our Leona go in on this fight, I thought she had lost her goddamn mind. But as it turns out, she might have been onto something here. Oh, they're dead. 
And after almost 10 hours of Jinx gameplay, I did the unthinkable. I didn't chase and die after my passive went off, I just regrouped with my team and helped get Dragon. Also, can I just say how bullshit Evelyn is? I mean, we were the same level, I have Maw, and she was kinda behind this game, and she still insta-killed me like I'm a minion. Anyway, after that death, I was pretty pissed. Luckily, I was given the perfect opportunity to get revenge by cleaning up the entire enemy team after a close team fight. Well, close before I got there. A little later, my team and I grouped up, and even though the fight was way closer than I thought it was going to be, Gwen was able to just win the game while the rest of us were fighting for our lives. Honestly, I am super excited to do more AD carry challenges in the future because this was pretty fun. If you want to watch more videos like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, watch the video on your screen now.